thank you. Thank you. Wow. Right. Okay. You guys uh, have a, a request, video request for Bad Religion. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twentieth Century Digital Boy. Now we've heard rumors that they've broken up. Can you? Can, is this true? You ask him. You just don't tour with them. Oh, really? Them. Really? No, they're not breaking up. Cool. That's it. They're uh, they've been around for sixteen years, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> a little out of breath, but. Uh, no, that's a false rumor. Okay, that is good news. Here's Bad Religion, 20th Century Digital Boy. Stay tuned for an interview with SNFU. Okay, uh, back with SNFU. First off, a few laba. Nice word to say. A few laba, what is it? Who gets that one? It means, uh, <laughs> you up like a bad accident. Uh, it's an acronym. <laughs> <laughs> um, it all makes sense now, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. It... Wesley Willis wrote it, and we yeah, stole it. came up with it. We stole it. Oh, Wesley Willis We'll did? give him full credit. Uh, you, you know he's hit the mainstream, too, now. Yeah. He's got a video. Yes. What? Yeah, that's right. But it's it'll cool. be interesting to see if one. the mainstream is ready for Wesley Willis. <laughs> but, uh, so you guys, uh, you have a very, oh. or Cha, you've always had a very sort of direct, cartoony, you know, angry style to your lyrics. In this album, you're talking about a lot of pop culture figures like Michelle Pfeiffer, Charlie Manson, and Eddie Vedder. Elfie Schlegel. Elfie Schlegel. Mm -hmm. Lots of people. So what's your take on Eddie? No take. What's, what's that song about? Uh, tapes, uh, the song's about a uh, teenage girl who has a crush on Eddie Vedder. Now she's looking for somebody better. Okay, so it's Eddie more Vedder. about the phenomenon of like, people, yeah, fans who like throw away, dispose of their heroes a year later. Kind of yeah, thing. kind of thing. Yeah. So, so you don't feel like like there's that line. Eddie it's not better. vindictive. It's not vindictive, okay? Because no. there's that line. I'd like him to hear the song though. Well, you, I'm sure he will. I hope um, so. You've also had the distinction of being the only Canadian band on Epitaph. A lot of bands on there. Rancid, Offspring. Are these peers of yours? Is there like a community from Vancouver to to California? No, we're the Black Sheep's of Epitaph. Are you? I think so. There's not a lot Everybody of dialogue between California, you and the other band? But it's not, not such a bad thing. So who is your community then of musicians? This is it right this here. Right here? How about in Vancouver? Do you, do you have a lot of people that you... that you? Well, um, now that Jay's gone, we have no one to hang out with. Jay Scott? Jay Myers. Oh, Jay Myers, yeah. We share, we share a practice. King of Vancouver. Anyway. We share a practice spot with uh, BNU and Bloody Worm, Strain. 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 Yeah, all those bands. Cool. And also, um, in the song Bulimia, Biff Naked uh, sings with you. Yeah, that's the second song she's been on, cool. on our record. She often talks about you, so she's she's like a good pally. Yeah, we like her. She's cool. And it was interesting, the song Bulimia, because often it's associated with like a, fem a female eating disorder, but is it is it something that concerns you as guys? I've been trying to lose weight lately, actually. <laughs> you have been. Why? I don't know. It's because it, of, hey, okay. because I'm so to... much in the public eye, you know. I just want to look good for everybody. Yeah. But as far as as far as about, I've, I've, we had a discussion with someone. As far as men talking about bulimia, if it's a, an issue that's very important, uh -huh. and if if it's a gender specific issue, I don't know why men can't sing about bulimia. I don't think it's I mean, a gender specific well, thing. Well, no, though. but someone's that's kind why of it's weird that a man, for a male to sing about bulimia, it's kind of strange. It's like, why not? No, it's an important issue that should, mm -hmm. should be dealt with as much as possible. And why I would there there is like a a large amount of men who are anorexic. It just it seems that within within these messages to the media or what have you, stories, films, it's more often associated with women. Yeah. So is like your your weight is a concern for you guys or the way you look? Not really. No, no, really. <laughs> Except for you. That was you. supposed to be a joke. Except for me. And you you have uh, addition of some saxophones, some keyboards. You also we play saxophone. I played the saxophone. Really? Yeah. Woo! Woo! There's a keyboard player over there. Simon Head. Simon. Simon Head. And you have producer Dave Ogilvy, who's worked with Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, Skinny Puppy. Uh, is there any similarities between the music that you do and those bands? And why did you choose David to work with? I think Dave likes to work with bands that that he likes as people and likes their music so we get along with Dave we're good friends with Dave so I mean it's not all money thing or whatever who's gonna pay the most money or whatever so yeah so he's, he's a good a friend Vancouver of ours he, he's, a, he's a fan so he mixes the albums and does a great job cool. excellent guy to work with yeah he plays on their hockey team oh he does you guys play hockey yeah yeah they do not right now we're not we're looking for hockey tickets tonight though <laughs> two Leafs tickets we will barter for uh, we'll know. trade for merchandise yeah Wow. Uh, and really amazing performance. Always, always a great performance. I saw saw you years ago 
and um, you're singing Better Homes and Gardens, the song, something like that, and yes. you're like sprinkling the, the audience with like water from a, from a like plant, plant watering device and yes. stuff like that. So real, real, uh, I used to do routines to records at home. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd lock myself in the bedroom. Yeah. I did a uh, one to Aerosmith's Dream On, uh -huh. and it climaxed with me being buried under four mattresses. <laughs> Dream on, child. Dream, dream on, boom. Dream on, boom. Yeah. And the surveillance camera video will be uh, on an uh, infomercial probably next summer. So it's way, it's way more important. Like you've always had like a theatrical or a, like more than just standing around and rocking out. You've always had sort of this other performance consciousness. Yeah, it's kind of give something to, um, people something to look at. And then we, we try and do stuff that... Uh, gets the audience participating, whether they know it or not. Yeah. And that's where the pouring water probably, on them or spitting on them or... And it probably keeps it more interesting for us. Whatever. Too. Yeah, I did, I, Because people go, how can you, like, we played 200 shows last year or whatever. It's like, how can you do it? It's like, if you put something into it, you get more out of it. Mm -hmm. so. that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, you have okay, to keep it interesting um, for yourself, too. You have to be interested in yourself, you said? Yeah, you have to be interested, have to keep it interesting for yourself or else if you're just bored, you look bored. That's right. When you're yeah, a lot of people are bored, but no. it is true. What you put into life, you get out of it. That's right. Uh, you don't have the video yet for this album, but we're going to be playing something from one uh, most likely to succeed. This is Eric's Had a Bad Day. Check out FNFU November 6th at um, the Eclipse in Oshawa. It's an all ages gig, November 6th, this Wednesday. FNFU, thanks Hi, for coming down.